Sean. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go back to where you um, were talking earlier about uh, capturing an image of the driver being something that might enable you to uh, give up on a pursuit if there was there was danger and it was something like a traffic offence. Um, and so this week or le early last, late last week, um, we're probably aware there was footage of a police officer using a tactic of smashing a windscreen um, in a case where I think it was um, a suspect a uh, person who was suspected of driving without a licence. So without getting into details of that specific case, I just wanted to ask in general, what place, if any, does that tactic currently have in the cases where you're pursuing and dealing with uh, driving offences? Which tactic? The... the Well, the tactic which we saw was um, using, um, I think, the baton to smash the windscreen and then a knife to, to, to prise it away. Um, Okay, well, as you said, we can't talk about particular... We've got to be cases. careful yeah. talking about... It's what's one of the general about incidents. cases. What, what, in yeah, general, I mean, how is that tactic? I'll try to give you a general answer, because I won't talk yeah. about that case, because there's an investigation ongoing which is going to be um, actually carried out independently by the IPCC. Um, generally, you've got a, the, the dilemma is that, you know, you, you need to know why do you want to arrest that person who happens to be in a vehicle? <coughs> why do you want them to... or why do you need to get into the vehicle? Um, but again, you've only got so many options. If you've got a stop vehicle and you can't get in, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there all day or <laughs> you've got to do something to intervene. So we do our best to get into the vehicle without causing any damage. Occasionally that can require that the vehicle may get damaged in the process. Um, never a good idea, obviously, because it's not very straightforward if you've got glass being broken or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but there are limited options if somebody will refuse to get out of the vehicle. Um, and you, you mentioned body cameras earlier on. So potentially, if body cameras are in use, then capturing the image, establishing the identity of the person could be done outside of the vehicle. Then, in that case. It's certainly helpful. It's not always conclusive, but I think it's certainly helpful. Um, but yeah, that, So therefore, I, I think it's certainly one of the things that can reduce the chance of a pursuit or stop it and give you somewhere to go afterwards to, uh, to pursue that. Uh, one of the, the things you've got to look at is the gravity of the offence for which you want to arrest that person. So you could say, OK, then stay in the car, drive off if you like, but we want to arrest them for rape. Well, that's probably not a wise idea. Yeah, we want the evidence on them, as well as the evidence we may obtain, have obtained before or afterwards. So they're the usual considerations we have to, to consider. You can, you can let a, a, a suspect walk away. The purpose of an arrest is to allow an interview and to gather any evidence that they have on them that might be relevant to the investigation that you've got. I mean, it may be a, a phone that they've got you want to get. It may be a, you know, a, a credit card. It may, it may be lots of things. What's, on, you know, what's in their clothing, what sort of chemical or uh, forensic evidence you they obtain from them. If you allow them to leave the scene or where they have that evidence, the chance of getting that later can be destroyed. So they're the sort of things that we have to, to think about. But in the case of purely driving offences, that wouldn't probably come into it, would it? Well, it depends. That's why I say I can't get into this offence. I would say the reason that we stop people in cars is not only for driving offences. Exactly. Right, well, Leone, you had a question. Yes, I just wanted to ask you if I could about uh, moped enabled. Sorry, could you just, just add, sorry, mm. could you just, just add one thing. Mm. One thing you've always got to consider. So, for example, it may be that somebody doesn't have a, a right to drive. Okay, so they may not have a right to drive by age. They may not have a drive, right to drive because their license has been withdrawn. What you're not always aware of at the beginning is what did they do to stop the license being withdrawn? I mean, there might be a drunk driver who killed two people over the last five years. Have got in prison, so they've been, they've been banned. Well, you can let them go, or you can carry on. Yep. But at the beginning, it's often, sometimes hard for the officer to know. So, what appears to be simply a motoring offence is not always as simple as it appears. Sorry. <laughs>